interest rates. Yeah. We've talked about it a bunch on this channel, but what I did want to bring to the channel is for people who are worried about interest rates and where they could go, what are some stocks that um, you may want to look at to hedge yourself against the rising interest rates? So I asked you to bring three stocks to buy on rising interest rates. Before you get into the three, just talk about um, your sentiment towards interest rates. And also, you mentioned this in level three, why, what type of stocks it impacts and why you're going with the stocks you're going with. Yeah, so there's been a lot of, uh, I guess, concern. And I think that's why we saw the NASDAQ kind of really drop off. We saw the 10-year yield go up. It's about 1.5%. It's a level we haven't seen for a while. And I think some investors were getting a little nervous on some of the uh, high-flying tech stocks, high-growth tech stocks, that, and especially the ones that aren't experiencing any kind of positive uh, uh, flow as far as operations are concerned. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, you start to think about things like like Zoom, for example, is a high multiple, high growth stock that relies on, um, you know, lending to uh, continue their operations. And, you know, you can make the argument that maybe Zoom is on their way out from doing that, but it's still very early on in that game. Um, you could look at, you know, Palantir as another example of that, something that has a high multiple, Asana, which we love. Again, another one has a high multiple and, and, and really... Um, could be impacted uh, as far from a lending standpoint. If if interest rates go higher, the theory is is that you know they're going to, have to spend more money on paying back those loans and their debt, and that's going to impact bottom line, thus impacting earnings. And we all know how investors react to earnings, so that's why we look at some of those high growth, high multiple stocks uh, that may be impacted because of the growing rise in rates. So then, what benefits? from stuff like that. You have to look at things like value in general are going to continue to roll and do well. Um, for me in particular, we talked about this last night in Stockwatch Sunday, but we didn't really speak to this reasoning. And that is Goldman Sachs, really just all of the banks. You, you can look at the XLF if you want the ETF. But I think Goldman Sachs, best in class, you know, this was on the watch list this morning and is already doing really well. It, it just popped up over the 50-day moving average. I think this actually goes higher. What's incredible to me is that Goldman Sachs is up over 50% on the year and still is at a pretty low multiple. There's a lot of room for this to run still. And if interest rates continue to go higher, Goldman Sachs, the banks in general, continue to will continue to benefit. You can make the argument, too, that if you don't want something that's $400 a share, I certainly understand that. If you look at something like Bank of America, which is approaching a pretty strong resistance here, if it breaks up over this 4350 area, which it's pretty darn close to, this thing could start really start to get rocking. The difference between something like a Goldman Sachs and a Bank of America or even a Wells Fargo is that Goldman Sachs is investment-based banking, whereas like a uh, Bank of America is more, is more of a regional bank, has exposure to mortgage the mortgage side of things, which you know may benefit or um, be kind of a drawback depending on how you look at it. So these are going to be two to take a look at for sure. Another area that you may want to take a look at as far as value is concerned is Verizon. Um, pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yield. What do we say? Five yield. Five percent. Yeah. Five percent yield on this, as far as dividends are concerned, it's not going to go all over the place. Now, I will say that it is downtrending. We talked about this a little bit uh, in the past, but it looks as if it may be starting to make a turn. But the reason you get into something like uh, Verizon isn't for for crazy growth. You want to get into it because of the dividend yield, and it could be a a, a place to park your money, quote unquote, if uh, you know interest rates continue to rise. One other thing that's interesting, and Apple took a little bit of a hit this morning because of uh, the the rates going up, and it was impacted back in March when rates went up. But the thing about Apple is that I would consider this a value stock that's also a growth stock. It's a little bit of a hybrid because it's been around forever. It's 40 years and it's still growing. Uh, but because it's been around for 40 years, I would still I would consider this a value stock as well. They have a they have a dividend. Uh, still, I, th I think that we've always talked about Apple being a place to just park your money. You just keep buying it and owning it and you're going to be fine. Um, and so those are some areas that I would probably consider, you know, flocking to if we think that interest rates are going to continue to rise, which I do think that that's going to happen. So Zion, sorry, Zion Khan, um, is rising yields a concern for tech and growth stock as we saw in the beginning of this year, or is this just temporary noise? And you, you kind of alluded to it, but I wanted to shout out this specific, specific question. Yeah. Um, as we saw this pop, is this temporary to you? Um, I don't think it's temporary, but I don't think that we're going to see the type of reaction that we saw back in February, March, because it, it went up so, so high, so fast mm -hmm. um, that it kind of like shell shocked everybody. And they're like, what the hell? 
uh, you know, like wh- why is this happening? And it, it, people really started to have those inflation fears. That's kind of what yeah. really sparked it all. I don't think it's going to be the same type of velocity in which we see the 10 year yield move that we saw earlier. I think it's going to be a gradual move up and that, and the, and the stock market can absorb that much easier uh, than they did back in March. Yeah. So guys, if you are interested just to stay up to date, this is, these are one of the many topics we talk about on our live stream. We're live every Monday through Thursday to react to what's going on in the market. Interest yields, certainly one of the top conversations. 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, every Monday to Thursday. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell to learn when we go live.